How many more bodies will be found now that the lake is at record low levels? Another day, another crime scene. If you live in Austin, Texas, do not go to this lake. Multiple bodies on bodies is being found in this lake, and they don't know the cause of the deaths. Apparently, the theory is there's a serial murder lurking in these woods. Now, there is a bar a couple of blocks away from these woods. And this is a spot where people like to chill at, so maybe after the bar, when these men get some drinks, they walk in these woods just to get a fresh breath of air. The police ruled that there was no foul play, but all three men were seen in the two popular bar areas in Austin. Just this year, three men are found in this lake. And many people are claiming they can see patterns in the men being found in the lake. ER doctors were saying that they were seeing a lot of people coming in after being in these two neighborhoods. But it's not just in Texas. Chicago. The serial in Chicago and I was almost one of their victims. What you're looking at is black is where people were found in rivers or lakes. Purple is where women were missing who ended up being found in one of those locations. Uh, orange is an attempted pickup. So this guy pulls up dark SUV and he says, hey, I'm your Uber. Minnesota, bodies in a lake. A lake in Minnesota as a potential triple homicide. Other places around the world, bodies in the lake. Now police investigators came up that they may have 2,000 serial murderers each year that have not been caught. Police are on the lookout for a possible serial murder. Did you know that at any one time, there are between 20 and 25 active targeting innocent people across the USA. So next time you end up walking alone to a spot, you may want to think twice because they out there. All right, all right. So shout out to everybody that's been DMing me y'all snacks. Y'all been doing this consistently. Like it's been crazy. I'm loving it. It's crazy. We can't forget about Coriax Kenshin, so shout out Coriax Kenshin. And I know nobody told you this today, but I love you. Here, here's my hug. Take my hug. Okay, now with that being said, go get your snacks. I just started off in your world. Now, because this lake have unsolved mysteries to it, this gave me the idea to do unsolved mysteries, but it's caught on camera. Meaning, we get to see some of it unfold, but it's still a mystery, which make it a hundred times much more weird and creepy. This girl named Gia wakes up this following morning and tell her dad and her mother, good morning. She went off to college because this is where she liked to do her homework at because around this time it was 2020 when it was quarantine time. When you're stuck in the house, don't have nothing to do, so you got to sit inside all day and watch TV. I know some of y'all still do that even though quarantine is not a thing. But she didn't like staying inside like that. So what she decided to do is go to college every time she had to do work. So when she told her parents goodbye, she'll see you tonight, she actually didn't go to college at all. She had other plans and her parents did not know. So she decides to drive 60 miles out in Washington called the Index Forest that's surrounded by nothing but trees. And in this area, it's very, very, very creepy. And when it turns dark, you can't see anything at all. And investigators knew that she wasn't paying attention to her fuel tank because she was running low on gas and this will cost her and you will see why. But she drives 30 more miles out until this coffee shop catches her on camera, the CCTV footage. She stops at this coffee shop, buys some coffee in the Bigfoot chain and then she gets back in her car and leaves. And then this is when her car runs out of gas because she wasn't paying attention to it. So when she ran out of gas, she noticed that it was too late. So she tried to turn her car to the side of the road, but it was halfway on the side of the road and halfway on the street. She was last seen on July 24th at a coffee shop. Her car was found abandoned on the side of the road out of gas. So she took her Bible, her phone, and remember, she's still surrounded by all of these woods. So she had two options. Stay on the side of the road, walk, and hitchhike to wait for someone, which can also be creepy because you can get took. You don't know who may pick you up. Or you can go inside of the woods and just walk and hope you find your way out. And that's what she did. She went inside of the woods, up this hill, in this densely far and just kept walking up. I hate the park. I really do. I hate it here. If anyone thinks that I enjoy coming here, I don't. Police are investigating this case as a homicide. A body missing its head, its hands, and its feet. Now, the area she's in and the area she's walking in, a guy named David Polite did a video because he's doing a project about people who went missing in this area. And it's been over a dozen people who went missing in this area. And it's been unsolved. But... Do Gia know that? Probably not. Now, hours and hours go by, and the parents know that our daughter, she has not come. She's supposed to have been come from college. So, of course, they call her and text her like any smart person would, but she does not answer. And by 1 a.m., 
they know that it was very, very strange for her not to come home, so they called the police. Crews aren't giving up their search for this missing teen from Maple Valley. Well, Gia's car was found abandoned along a highway. Somebody had to see her. The highway's a busy highway. There has to be someone that Somebody has to saw see her. a young girl yeah. walking on that road, and we need that person. Now, actually, quickly, a huge, very huge search was gathered to find this girl named Gia, which is amazing how quick it was and how much people volunteered. It was hundreds, not hundreds, but it was over 100 of people that went to go volunteer to search for her. So now they know she's in this general area. So they searched and searched this area for days and did not find her until the seven day happened and they found something. Her journal, her keys, her Bible, her jacket, her clothes, and her phone but she's not around, they cannot find her. So they tell her parents, you must prepare for the worst at this point because it's not looking good. But then on the ninth day, searching this area, they see a girl sitting on a rock. They get the goosebumps as they seeing this girl because they think that it's Gia and they get closer to her and they see that is Gia. And they come up to her and they ask her, are you okay, are you all right? She says, yeah, I'm okay. She has not been injured in any type of way. She has a little bit of scratches, you know, you're hiking up in these trees. You might get scratched by a couple of branches. And they ask her, what made you come way out here? She said, I don't know. I don't know what made me drove out here. I don't even know really how I got here. I don't know why my clothes are off. I guess I've been missing for three days and I don't know why. No, they tell her, you actually been missing for nine days. How did you survive? Well, I was eating huckleberries and I was drinking water from the river. Using only berries and creek water to stay alive. And you have no clue at all what was going on. She says no, matter of fact, the first six days, she don't know what was going on and she don't know what happened at all. She only knew what happened on the seventh, eighth, and the ninth day and that's why she thought she was missing for three days so you can only imagine them eight days of her being in these woods sunset to sundown of how creepy it must have been for her and how strange something happened in these woods because still to this day she don't know why she done what she done the following days and it's all a mystery from her driving up there from what happened in the woods from her being completely lost creeps <laughs> Let's get into this creepy story that one of my subscribers sent to me. It was a DM. Walmart Home Entertainment. You can find anything for everybody. She works at Walmart and she gets off around 10 or 11. One of those two times, I really don't remember, but she gets off and it's late. She lives around three to four blocks away from her house and she walks home. Not only that, when she walk home late at night, she don't have no taser, no pepper spray, nothing. So when she told me this, she literally knew that she was wrong for that because she knew I was gonna yell at her for it. And I yelled at her for that because when you watching my videos for this long, you should know better. Oh, there's this man walking behind me and he's been following me for like over five minutes. And uh, I'm actually, kind of scared for my safety now that with the type of people that's around here in this world it's time for her to clock out she clocks out and she goes out of her workplace which is walmart and she heads home when she started walking she see this man with this baggy t-shirt she didn't think nothing of it and he was walking right behind her she thought it was a homeless guy so she kept walking looking over her shoulders but just kept walking and she was gonna turn right because she has to turn right and see that if this man is gonna follow her turning right which he does also turns right so now she has to walk three blocks knowing that this man is right behind her in her head she's like he could be following me but at the same time it could just all be a coincidence so she has to pass up these three blocks and then make a left then she's on her street what she does do she makes the left she walks down looking over her shoulders waiting for him to also make the left just to see if he do it and he did and she told me she was stuck with two options. Either she go home and this person knows where she live, which she don't want because she has to walk home every night from work, or she pass up her home just to stay on the most safe side. And she went with the second option, passing up her house. So she's like in the middle of the street and she walks right past her house looking at it like, you know what, I have to do it. And when she pass up her house, she stops at the stop sign at the other end of her street. And she's just gonna wait for this guy to pass her right up. She know it was kind of a risky chance because she she don't know if this guy might just grab her or, or do anything with her. But she was like, you know what? I'm gonna just take that chance and just let him pass me up so I can turn around 
and go back home. She goes and walks to the stop sign and wait for this man to pass her up. As he was getting real close to her, he stops and he asks her something. He says, I'm lost. I don't know where the nearest bus stop at. Can you please help me? I need your help. Now at this moment, she knew that he literally just passed up the bus stop. It was right next to Walmart where the highway was at. So she had a feeling he was lying. She still said, okay, you know, and she did her little pointy fingers guiding him and telling him where it's at next to the Walmart building. He said, okay, thank you. And he walked off back down the street the way that they both came from. So now she's at this end of the street while he's walking at the other end of her street. So she then starts walking slowly towards her house, like real slow. So that way when he turns off the street, she can hurry up and get inside of her house. But when he gets to the corner, he turns around and just starts charging her. Now I wouldn't say charging at her, but charging at her because he just started running towards her way. She didn't know what to think. At this very moment, she's like six to seven houses down. So she just started running, made sure she had her keys in her hand and she started jittering with the door when she got to the house. Noticing this guy is like four to five houses down from her now, running towards her direction. And she jitters, she gets in the door and closes it. And a guy actually runs past her house. She thought to herself, maybe he ran past my house just to try to play it off. He knew I was safe. So then we skip two to three days later when she has to walk home again alone. <sighs> In this day, she don't walk home never again. It changed her life. <laughs> now the next day happens. This day she brings a pocket knife with her inside her purse so she can feel much more safe. So she's working the whole entire day and she has PTSD now. Any man that walks next to her, by her, behind her, hurry up and looking at them because she want to make sure, is it that guy that was following me last night? But it wasn't. She never seen a guy doing her work shift at all. Then her work ends and then she's ready to walk home with that pike and knife ready this time. But then she realized one of her guy friends who work with her also walk home, but he walks a different direction. So she waits for him outside of the building before she leaves Walmart and asks him, yeah, can you please walk me home? I'm really scared this guy was trying to follow me last night. Matter of fact, he's at that bus stop right there. <laughs> Cause he was at the bus stop. Meaning this guy really does take the bus, but he must have missed the bus purposely or something. To wait for her, I don't know. But the guy ended up saying he couldn't. He was ready to go home, take a shower. You're fine. Like he, like what? And he just walked the different direction. Like he didn't care about her being at all. Like he didn't care what was gonna happen to her. He was just like, no, you fine. So she sees the same guy still at the bus stop. What she does is she literally stand outside of the building, the Walmart building for an hour waiting for him to leave and he doesn't. So what she decided to do is sneak her way to try to go home without being seen by this guy at all. Because they would make eye contact as she told me as she was standing at the Walmart building and he was at the bus stop. But then what would happen is when he would look away for a little bit, be on his phone for a little bit, she would sneak off hiding behind parked cars that's in the parking lot and she ran home. Now as she was running home, she felt like this guy was chasing after her. She kept running, he kept running, and she kept running. Which was one of her longest runs ever. She didn't look back. She just was praying that if I make it, I make it. If I don't, I don't. I know that this guy is chasing see me right now. Long story short, she ended up making it home, fidgeting with the keys in the door, hoping that this man don't just appear right behind her and grab her. She gets inside, she closes the door, and she quits her job. She don't work there no more. She says she'd rather stay broke than to live like this. This was her best way to make money right now because it was one of the closest jobs that she can walk there and back. Now she has to find another job or maybe work with a friend so that way you can work with a friend and a friend could bring you home and back. Something like that. Like this done ruin like a lot for her. And I don't blame her. I would have quit too. But y'all, that's the end of the story. If she would have sent me longer paragraphs, I would have explained the whole thing. I'm kind of glad that it's not that long because I want to know if y'all like this type of video style regardless. Please let me know. Y'all have to let me know or I'm not going to do this again. <laughs> Thank y'all and good night. Send me y'all stories. Uh, I just started off in your world.